Hello, YouTube viewers and Transformers fans of all ages. This is the Tia Fangi coming to you with what will hopefully be a quick and successful live stream video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at one of my all-time personal favorite toys of Bumblebee. This is the uh, Transformers Universe Classics Legends Class Bumblebee. This was released back in 2008, and this is the more traditional sized Legends Class Transformers toy. Uh, Gary's Transformers reviews. Hello there. So for those of you who are subscribed to my channel, I know you'll notice I uh, got my hair cut. But today, uh, Gary's Transformers View says it looks nice. Thank you, Gary. Um, basically, uh, when my hair gets to a certain length, I start to get headaches and it grows. And when at night when I sleep, my hair actually grows into my ear holes. And so um, even, though it, even though I'm almost bald, I actually prefer having my head like this. It's, if my family didn't joke about me that I had, not me, that my hair, uh, that they like my long hair, I'd leave it. I'd actually shave it bald, uh, but what are you gonna? But then I'd uh, look like a bald Lex Luthor with glass. I look like a fat Lex Luthor with glasses. So um, if I was bald, so what are you gonna do? Alrighty, now the main reason I wanted to review this toy of Bumblebee is because, um, for me personally, out of out of the toy, out of the infamous amount of toys of Bumblebee that have been released over the years. Uh, compared to other uh, Transformers generation style Transformers toys that have been released, in my opinion, this is the Bumblebee that is the closest to being size accurate, especially to how Bumblebee appears in the Transformers Generation 1 cartoon. Now, we have gotten uh, more recently released Legends class size toys of Bumblebee. Uh, for instance, this is the uh, Generations uh, 2013 Legends class Bumblebee that was released in the Thrilling 30 IDW toy line. And those of you with a keen eye, if you look here by the uh, blue headlights here on Bumblebee's shoulders and the all-black uh, windshield here on his back, this is actually the version of Bumblebee that was uh, uh, sold uh, uh, in, in the Age of Extinction toy line exclusively at Toys R Us stores. Or so. The main reason why I say that the universe version of Bumblebee is uh, more size accurate to how Bumblebee appears in the Generation 1 cartoon is because... In the Transformers Generation 1 cartoon, Bumblebee was portrayed as being uh, only slightly taller than an average uh, six-foot-tall uh, human being. I think Bumblebee in the Generation 1 cartoon, I think he's supposed to be um, seven feet tall. I don't know how tall of a robot uh, Bumblebee would exist. I have seen a real-life uh, Volkswagen Beetlebugs, which was uh, Bumblebee's original alt mode. Alt mode and the Volkswagen Beetlebug, even though it's a small car, all car, um, going by what Bumblebee said, is I can't see the argument by how tall of a robot he becomes, is what I was trying to say. I can't see why some Transformers fans would argue that the more recently released Legends class Bumblebee toys are more size accurate, but for a size test, here is a uh, Universe Bumblebee next to a uh, War for Cybertron Siege Optimus Prime. I'm um, so please let me know in the comment section which Bumblebee do you think is more size accurate, the Universe version. Or the Generations version. Uh, Gary's Transformers views. He's making a joke in the last chat. Looks waist down at a uh, animated Bumblebee. <laughs> nice joke, Gary. Now in the Transformers Generation One cartoon, um, size accuracy was a uh, somewhat irrelevant, especially because of the mass shifting that uh. The Transformers characters often did it, but despite its uh, flaws, um, the only articulation that this toy of Bumblebee has is that uh, his arms can rotate forwards and backwards 368 degrees. Um, he's got ball joint points in his hips, so the legs can go forward and backwards uh, a little more than one more than 180 degrees. But he's in Bumblebee can do the splits. It's, but there's no uh, swivel joints in there. Uh, Bumblebee doesn't have any elbow joints, just like the Generation 1 toy. Um, and, of course, um, he doesn't have any knee joints either. His legs are just one piece. But if you want, you can have Bumblebee uh, point his foot down. But that's just actually more of a transformation joint. Now, the main reason why I think this is the uh, most size-accurate version of Bumblebee is because um, when I transformed my Legends Class Bumblebee toys... And I compared them with my other uh, mini generation style uh, mini bot toys. This version of Bumblebee was the one that had the most size accurate vehicle mode. 
So if you wanted to, you could, um, if you wanted to do a stop motion video, you could potentially, uh, mass shift Bumblebee from being a robot this size to the, uh, to the size of vehicle that this version of Bumblebee is. So just like Generation 1 Bumblebee, almost to transform him, you start by bringing his legs together and gen for Generation 1 Bumblebee, um, he, this step wouldn't be included because it would already be like that. So, uh, take his backpack, pull that up, becomes the roof of the car, and then you want to bring all that down and have it like that. And then you want to take the arms, rotate them 180 degrees. Make sure that this piece doesn't, uh, where Bumblebee's head hides, doesn't disconnect. And push the arms in. Alright, and here is Universe Bumblebee in his alt mode. This is just a generic car, as far as I'm aware of. It's not based on any existing uh, maker model of automobile. It's just a generic car to that's stylized to have some design cues from a Volkswagen Bug, yet it has some design cues from some uh, tiny size generic sports cars. And I'll hurry up and get the other Bumblebee toy transformed. And then, just for a size comparison there, I won't transform Optimus Prime right now. And right now that would take too long and I want to be able to get to bed. I don't know if Gary is still here. He hasn't typed anything in the live stream chat. I honestly didn't expect anyone would still be up at this time of night. It's 9.30. Actually, it's 9.40 right here where I am. Ah, uh, input. Hello there. So, um... Since input, you arrived late, and I bought Siege Rat, and uh, you bought, you agreed to sell me a Transformers toy, a Siege Ratchet. So basically, input. Um, what we have tonight is a quick video review of uh, the Transformers Universe, uh, Cla Universe Classics, uh, 2008 uh, Legends Class Bumblebee toy. So here is Bumblebee in his robot mode for you. Input. Oh, and David Hill, hello there. Uh, David Hill is asking, what did I miss? So David Hill, I'm doing a quick review on the Transformers Universe Classics 2008 Legends Class Bumblebee toy. To my knowledge, this is the first Legends Class toy based on Generation 1 Bumblebee that was released by Hasbro. And in my opinion, this toy is uh, the most uh, size accurate Bumblebee toy next to, uh, compared to other Transformers char characters and toys in the Generations line. Uh, for instance, here is Bumblebee next to um, Universe Bumblebee next to Siege Optimus Prime. And I know Optimus Prime towers over Bumblebee. E, however, in the Transformers Generation 1 cartoon, Bumblebee was portrayed as being only um, twice the overall size of an adult human being. Being so, in my opinion, this one is the, uh, this Bumblebee toy is most size accurate, especially compared to other minibots. And I'll see why in a moment, so transform him back into his alt mode one more time. It's fairly simple. It's almost the same. It only has, I think, one more step compared to the Generation 1 Bumblebee toy, which is uh, actually bringing his uh, legs together at the feet. They actually separate, unlike Generation 1 Bumblebee. Yeah. Uh, David Hill uh, noticed my haircut that I got yesterday. Thank you, David Hill. And Buddy says, ooh, that's a great Bumblebee fig. Uh, the Universe Classics Bumblebee toy is a great fig. And big input. There's his Autobot logo, and that is not a sticker. That is actually tampographed onto the surface of Bumblebee's roof. Nice here. And one thing I like about uh, the knee joint, about the knee joints, is that uh, they're the only parts of Bumblebee's, uh, Bumblebee's, uh, the top of his vehicle mode that's actually black. So, um, in my opinion, that's a little, uh, that's a very tiny nod to the movie verse version of Bumblebee having his black racing stripes. So, David Hill and Input saying hi to each other. So, here's Bumblebee next to the other Legends Class Bumblebee that I showed off before David Hill and Input arrived, which is the, uh, this is actually the Toys R Us exclusive, uh, Age of Extinction Bumblebee toy. Toy that was released in a two-pack with the Age of Extinction Deluxe Class Bumblebee toy. Alright, so here they are, and, um, this is the more recent, uh, Legends Class size Transformers toy. And as you can see, the, uh, the original sized Legends Class Transformers toys were, um, they're actually only slightly larger than the current Micromasters that are being released in the Siege line. So one could make the argument that at, uh, 
the MicroMasters replacing Legends class Transformers toys. Hasbro is almost actually going back to the way Transformers toys in that size class as actually were originally when they were created during the mid to late 2000s. So there's Bumblebee next to himself. And for a size comparison with some of his uh, fellow minibots, the reason why I think Universe Bumblebee is the most size accurate version of Bumblebee is because, um, for a size comparison, here he is next to Titan's Return Brawn. And as you can see, Brawn is almost twice the size of Bumblebee, which in my opinion is most appropriate. So there they are. Are at all angles. My apologies for not having them exactly straight up. Okay. Here's Bumblebee next to another minibot that's a truck. Here he is next to Gears. So as I said earlier in the review, uh, Bumblebee, he, he was a... Basically, the, originally, he was portrayed as being the physically smallest of all the Autobots before the Micromasters, Target Masters, and Headmasters, and other uh, small-sized Transformers arrived. Bumblebee was portrayed as being almost the same size as a human, and so Bumblebee really, really tiny is uh, pretty size I is pretty decent in my opinion, and so... I don't know if anyone shares this opinion with me, but... I'm surprised Bumblebee hasn't been given a MicroMaster sized toy in the Siege line. There's Bumblebee next to Gears. I'd love Gears to be given a new toy in the upcoming Earthrise toy line the way Cliffjumper is. Trying to see what other minibots I have here. Uh, there he is. There's one minibot I wanted to show off. I mentioned Cliffjumper, so here's Bumblebee next to a. Cliff jumper. And for me personally, even though in the Generation 1 toy line, Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee were the exact same size of Transformers toy, I've always enjoyed the idea of Cliff Jumper being slightly bigger than Bumblebee. So that's really good. Uh David Hilly is saying in the live stream chat, TFN, you should grab a Molotov chrome pen and hit the rim. Ims, uh, he's asking Input if he agrees with that statement. Uh, Input says that he will. Um, I don't know if I'd be able to get a chrome pen into the hubcaps on Bumblebee, David Hill, because it's so tiny. And to be honest, when I try to do tiny spaces, uh, if I'm not too careful or if I get nervous, my uh, fingers end up twitching on me and I make a mistake. Like, so I've actually been pretty careful with... Um, which Transformers toys I paint the wheels on. So that's why I haven't painted bronze wheels either. I do admit that there are more minibots who have uh, painted wheels. I mean, there are less minibots with painted wheels, such as Gears, compared to ones that don't have their wheels painted, such as Cliff Jumper here. Yeah. And basically, um, the reason why I'm doing this review of Bumblebee and why I'm saying he's the most size accurate. I have uh, one toy of all 17 of the minibots really, uh, it's featured in the first three years of the original Transformers Generation 1 toy line in my uh, Transformers collection. Action. And um, basically, when I was looking at all the Legends class toys of Bumblebee, compared to the other minibots, I felt that Bumblebee, this version released in the Universe Classics line, I felt it was the most size accurate. Thank you, it's so on. Um, you'll bear in mind with me for a second here, see if I can uh, find them all for you. Let's see. David Hill, he, said, he wants to send me some pictures of some of the custom Transformers he's moving on. Uh, Tfanking101 at Gmail. Uh, yes, David Hill, that is correct. That is my uh, Gmail. So, 
Looking forward to see what picks you have, David Hill. Moving some stuff aside because there's something I want to show you guys here in a moment. See if I can get all these guys uh, lined up together. background board from when I did my videos before I revealed my face to everyone. See if it'll hold up for me. See if I can get my laptop turned for you guys. Not knocking anything over. And of course my backdrop doesn't want to stay up on me. do it. Alright, and so here is a Universe Bumblebee right here compared to my collection of Minibot Transformers toys. And in my opinion, these are the Minibots that in vehicle mode as I have an av accidentally knock over a bunch of my uh, Transformers toys in the back. Like, bleh. So, these in my opinion are the Minibot toys that are the most size accurate compared to each other. So here in the front row, we have the 1984 Minibots. We have Huffer from Combiner Wars, Wind Charger from Combiner Wars, Bumblebee from Universe, Cliff Jumper from Thrilling 30, Brawn from Titans Return, Gears from Thrilling 30. Behind them, I decided to put the 1986 Season 3 Minibots because all but one of them are repaints of the 1984 Minibots. We have Pipes from Combiner Wars. There's a Tailgate from Thrilling 30. Wheelie from Universe. Um, this is again that larger legend size Bumblebee toy that I showed that I've showed earlier in the video. Um, I use this as hubcap because it's a repaint of Cliff Jumper, the way Hubcap was in the Generation 1 toy, toy line. Here is Outback from Power of the Primes. Swerve from Thrilling 30. Here we have Cosmos from Titans Return. And this toy of Warpath is actually a third-party company, but I feel that this toy of Warpath, it not only has a more G1 accurate transformation, but it's also a more size accurate compared to the official toy of Warpath we got in the Combiner Wars toy line. So this is actually um, Iron Factory's Burning Slug, and this, in my opinion, is the uh, quintessential Legends class size toy of Warpath anyone should have in their Transformers collection. Moving along, we have... Beachcomber from Universe Classics, Essex, uh, Sea Spray from Power of the Primes, and finally, last but by no means least, we have Power Glide from Combiner Wars. So as you can see, um, yeah, this is, in my, for me personally, is the most size accurate that the Minibots get in their alt modes, especially uh, comparing them to each other as they appeared in the Transformers Generation 1 cartoon. The size of the Minibots varied Arita, not only between individual episodes, but between their overall appearances in the Generation 1 cartoon. And in the original Generation 1 toy line, the Minibots were all almost, even though they were all fairly the same size, because of the Generation 1 cartoon uh, and uh, Transformers characters going through mass shifting, shifting and everything, in my opinion, um, some of the Minibots are slightly smaller and some of them are slightly larger. And for me, the smaller bots include uh, Beachcomber, Wheelie, and Bumblebee, and the larger bots include the, uh, uh, specifically the 1985 bots, apart from Beachcomber, Warpath, uh, Sea Spray, and Power Glide, because of their alt modes, I think they're slightly larger. Same thing with Outback and Brawn, even though they're trucks just like Gears, Gears and Swerve, and Pipes and Huffer. Outback and Brawn, because they're slightly bulkier robots, I think their truck modes should be, uh, 
slightly larger, even though Huffer and Pipes transform into semi-trucks. So, moving the camera back a bit, bringing my face back into view. You, uh, Crimson Raptors, hello there. Uh, let's see, scrolling back up, uh, catching up on the live stream chat while the camera wasn't looking at me. Uh, can you watch Input's G2 Grimlock video to see Chrome? Um, I'll try David Hill. It'll be a huge packet since I've done a few recently, uh. Input says, LMAO, how many times was Grimlock shown? Um, David 12, I think higher input, LOL. Let's see. Let's see. Input, he says he has to get, uh, Combiner Wars Pipes, uh. Please, Input, if you can get Pipes, get him. Get him and, um. Get him and, um. Even though this version of Pipes and also, uh. Huffer, even though they're uh, repaints of the uh, th uh, Thrilling 30 Legends class IDW version of Optimus Prime, they're the only toys of Huffer and Pipes that we've gotten recently, and so, in my opinion, they don't do too bad of a job of representing both characters, especially in alt mode. Some people might question robot mode, but me personally, I don't, I'm not bothered by it. Crimson Raptors, hello again. Uh, Crimson Energy says the generation version has better articulation, though, plus it works better for a siege style ve vehicle mode. Uh, that is a valid uh, argument, Crimson Raptors, for favoring those more recently released Legends class toys. Uh, Crimson Energy says both alt mo modes look like a Honda Civic as opposed to a Volkswagen Bug. Uh, ha ha. Uh, that is true, uh, Crimson Raptors. Um, uh, Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee, the, these vehicle modes, they're highly stylized vehicles. And I personally, personally, um, before you got here, Crimson Raptors, I had said that I personally think that some of these vehicle modes are just generic. They aren't based on existing makes or models of vehicle modes. And to be honest, um, for me personally, I think that for Takara, Tomy, and Hasbro, from a more um, economic standpoint and from a licensing standpoint, by just having the uh, Transformers toys be just generic-looking vehicles and not miniature versions of real-life makes or models, models I think Hasbro and Takara Tomy avoid the legal issues of selling toys of cars and trucks that motor companies probably wouldn't allow toys to be made of them. Um, and so, but that's just my opinion. And, you know, me personally, compared to the days when I was a kid back in the 1990s, um, seems like the motor companies were more relaxed in past decades about toy companies making miniaturized uh, versions of their of the cars they produced used compared to today. And I actually noticed uh, when I went, when I actually went to my local grocery store, there was a, a shelf of uh, Hot Wheels cars and almost all of those Hot Wheels cars were um, original models created by Mattel instead of miniaturized versions of existing uh, makes and models of cars. So this is just my opinion. I don't know if it's true, but I think that the motor companies are a little more uh, tense about toy companies producing uh, toy-sized versions of the uh, cars and the trucks they produced. Used to, let me see, uh, let's see, uh, catching up on live stream chat, Crimson Raptors saying hi to everyone. Uh, Gary's Transformers News, he says, I wish Pipes got a better toy. I agree. He, uh, Pipes and Huffer, they could have gotten le better Legends class toys the way, um, Iron Factory gave uh, Warpath a uh, better toy. I, he says, Cybertron Mold of Huffer, like semi, I thought looked good. Uh, that is, uh, yes, Dave, yes, the toy David Hill is talking about. Um, Hasbro uh, released a toy in the Transformers Cybertron toy line back in 2005 called uh, Armor Hide. And that toy was repainted orange to represent Generation 1 Huffer. And that toy was released exclusively at BotCon. And for some Transformers fans, that toy remains a better toy of Huffer than the one that we got in the Combiner Wars toy line. So I agree, David Hill, with your statement there. Uh, uh, everyone's saying hi to each other. Crimson Raptor saying, asking, are we all night owls? Uh, I personally am Crimson Raptor. Sometimes I don't fall, go to bed until 10.30, although that's because I've been a... Uh, Suffering, suffering a slight case of insomnia the past few months, and so I'm trying my best to get over it. See, input says it's midnight where he lives. Gary's transfer says it's all the same to him. Him, how his name is pronounced. 
David Hill says it's one o'clock in the morning. Morning, morning, and he says he watches Trent Summers videos whenever he can. So thank you, David Hill, for deciding that mine is worth watching. Gene Crimson just says it's midnight here too. You, it's a uh, baby fry. Friday for him tomorrow, and then it'll be Adult Friday afterwards, lol. That's a good one, Crimson Raptors. There's uh, Gary Transformers U says, an earth rice toy of pipes. Pipes, um, to be honest, Gary, uh, since we're me, since they're releasing a brand new deluxe class toy of Cliff Jumper, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, more mini bots follow. Oh, well. Uh, Gary Transformers U says, it's hard to find the Generation 1 toy of pipes. Um, and on that note, Gary, it's actually hard to find the Combiner Wars version of Pipes right now. Um, I browsed around Amazon and I compared the price tags of Huffer and Pipes. And even though they're both hard to find, Pipes', is, Pipes his price tag is a lot is on the aftermarket. It's much higher than Huffer's. I thought they would have been about the same. And considering the history that they're both, uh, both uh, different characters that are repaints of each other, but no... Uh, Apparently, more people want pipes than they do Huffer. Uh, David Hill says he understands what I'm going through because he suffered from insomnia for years. David Hill, thank you so much. It's good to know that there's other Transformers fans who suffered the same physical ailments that I have. So, bring my laptop around. I kind of messed them up a bit, but here's again that group shot of all the minibots in their alt mode. And so... In my opinion, a univer the universe uh, version of Bumblebee that was released in 2008, it's much more size accurate compared to his fellow minibots. Out of all 17 of these minibots, technically we don't have a toy of Hubcap yet. At, at so, uh, setting him, so setting this second Bumblebee off to the side, as far as official toys that have been released, um, technically Hubcap is the last minibot to be given a toy. Um, as far as the upcoming Earthrise Cliff Jumper toy, being released, um, if it was repainted yellow and given the name Hubcap, I think most Transformers fans would be confused if Hasbro had lost the rights to Bumblebee. So because of the, the his, because of the history of the Transformers toys, where uh, most Transformers fans have incorrectly believed that Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper are repaints of each other, when in the Generation One toy line it was actually Cliff Jumper and Hubcap. In my opinion, a uh, poor Hubcap, he's uh, destined to be the forgotten Minibot compared to the other Minibots. And part of that has to do with the fact that Hubcap never actually appeared in the Transformers Generation 1 cartoon. But out of all the Minibots that have been released, um, because my preferred Minibot toy of Warpath is a third-party toy, wait, wait, since Cliffjumper has been announced in Earthrise, in the Earthrise toy line, if I had to choose another Minibot to be released in Earthrise, it would definitely be Warpath. F and I know I'm fully aware that we got a deluxe class toy of Warpath in the Generations line back in 2011, Evan. But in my opinion, I think we need a uh, new toy of Warpath it has to be released. East, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, catching up on the live stream chat. At uh, Gary's Transformers, he says, I would love to see another G1 accurate accurate toy of Wind Charger. I agree. Uh, the reason why I'm using the uh, Combiner Wars version of Wind Charger, Roger, um, even though it's uh, less accurate compared to uh, the uh, Power of the Primes version of Wind Charger, the Combiner Wars version of Wind Char Charger, it's size accurate, especially in vehicle mode compared to the other minibots. Uh, it's, even though this guy is, uh, is more difficult to transform than Combiner Wars Warpath, I still think it's the... Uh, more size accurate one. And uh, David Hilly says, Combiner Wars Pipes was marked down for a while on uh, line, and I didn't get it then. Oh, David Hill, I'm so sorry that you didn't get Huffer when he when he uh, had a price reduction. Reduction on the aftermarket. Input, he says, Hasbro had it cheap for a long time. That is true, Input, they did, and now that things have gotten expensive, they're trying to uh, balance everything out so that... Uh, Transformers fans won't criticize the toys that they're putting out right now. The Crimson Raptor says you also take into account that the companies are more shy about their vehicles being involved in an intergalactic war, fictional or uh, fictional or real. LOL. That is a true. That is true. Crimson Raptors. 
Raptors, I mean, just imagine alien life forms coming to planet Earth and taking on, on the vehicles we used to drive. I have to hide themselves from us in plain sight. Oh, wait a minute. Robots in disguise. Ah, uh, Hasbro. Now I know why you've permanently drawn me into the Transformers franchise. <laughs> uh, Gary's Transformers, he says, I really love the toy models of the Minibots. They almost always wear masks, and I love that. That is true, Gary. Half of the Minibots, especially the 1985 Minibots, um, they don't have a full face the way we think of the face. Ace of having uh, two eyeballs and a mouth. Now, half the Minibots, especially the ones from Season 5, in fact, all the Minibots from Season 5, um, I have exposing a Sea Spray's face. If you look right there, Sea Spray, he actually has, um, he actually has a visor and a mouth plate. Same thing with the other Minibots. Uh, Beachcomber, he has a, even though he has a mouth, he actually has a pair of, uh, he actually has a visor covering his eyes. Uh, Power Glide's on the reverse. Uh, he has, even though he has two eyeballs, he has a mouth plate. Same thing with Cosmos and Warpath. I think the only Minibots that, that's that, uh, didn't have mouth plates and had full faces were all of the, uh, 1984 lineup of Minibots. If you look there at Gears, he's got eyes and a face. Braun does too, even though I can't exp show his head right now. Cliff Jumper, eyes and a face, same thing with Bumblebee. E. Again, same with Wind Charger, eyes and a face, same thing with Huffer. A friend. For the 1986 Minibots, um, Hasbro decided to continue the 85 line of having half the face be more robotic than human. You can see there on Tailgate, even though he has eyes, he's got a mouth plate. Uh, Wheelie, I think, might be the only uh, Season 3 Minibot who has, uh, had him, who has a full face with two eyeballs and a mouth. Um, I think Outback has a mouth plate, but I can't remember. Let me see if I can get his face exposed for you guys. Oh, yeah. So, Outback, he does have a mouth, but he has a visor instead of actual eyes. Eyes on the top half of his face. Getting transformed back. Alrighty. And with Swerve, same thing as Outback. Even though he's got a mouth, he's got a visor instead of actual eyes. Right, so, to uh, requote what Gary said, that uh, yeah, it is always interesting that the uh, mini half the mi most of the mini bots they either have a visor or a mouth plate, a covering half of their faces. Uh, David Hill he says, I as don't forget about Bumble Jumper. Uh, David Hill, I don't forget about Bumble Jumper, but the thing is, there haven't been any toys of him released. I prefer his much shorter name of Bumper compared to Bumble Jumper. Makes him sound more distinguished from Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper in that regard. David Hill, he says, Generations Warpath is his Warpath toy. I agree, David Hill, that is a nice Warpath toy. Let's see, I uh, lost my place here for a second. News and Raptors, he said, his Valerian Hood is really good. Get yourself a steady sleep schedule. Some people take them, but don't take more than two. They're natural and they're uber cheap at Walmart. Unfortunately, Crimson Raptors, there's no Walmarts where I live. If so, I don't know if I'd be able to find any medication that's sold there, or there and only sold there. Uh, Crimson Raptors, he says, if you put silver paint on Generations Deluxe Warpass Tread, as you've got yourself a Siege version of version of Warpath, that is true, Crimson Raptors. David Hilly says his favorite Wind Charger toy is the Reveal the Shield version. I agree, that is a good looking Wind Charger toy. David Hill says that's a nice idea. Crimson, he's going to do that tomorrow. David Hill, good luck with that custom project. Uh, Crimson Raptors said he had to get the knockoff version of Power Glide. I had to get a Power Glide size accurate. He's supposed to be smaller than Warpath, but taller than Mobile B. Maybe that's good to know, Crimson Raptors. David Hill says that's his favorite version of Power Glide is the knockoff version Crimson Raptors mentioned. Uh, Crimson Raptors says there's no driver or way people don't bat an eye. They I, they think they were just driverless cars, lol. That is true. Wolf Knight Gaming, hello there. I would love, Gary says, I love to see all the recent 
uh, mini bot tots with toy accurate head sculpts might be a future project maybe uh, crimson rap jersey says need to sell my old universe legends and reveal the shield wind charger and power the primes wind charger is best for c scale well uh throwing 30 tailgate for this is crimson rap jersey says throwing through tailgate i need to get get to repaint it to tripticon scene in century Entry Wipeout from the Marvel Comics at Crimson Raptors. That sounds like a great idea. Uh, uh, David Hilly says he's willing to buy Winch Hard. Harder from Crimson Raptors if he'll follow him on Instagram. Crimson Raptors says, I recently got the Thrilling 30 Swerve. Had gears, but Swerve was uh, about to be bought at a good price. I think it's because big deal on IDW Comics or something. That is true, Crimson Raptors, a swerve. He actually got a, uh, uh, he was actually a focal character in some of uh, IDW's comic books back in 2014 when the uh, Thrilling 30 toy of him was released. He, so that's probably why you got him at a good deal. Bill you know, you know, Hasbro released a lot of copies of him. Okay, Crimson Raptors, thank you for clarifying that with me. Move Night Gaming says he got an Earth Wars game. Uh, Gary, he says he missed out on the Generations Warpath toy. I'm sorry to hear that, Gary. So for Wolf and Gaming, um, this video started off as a video review of the uh, Transformers Universe uh, 2008 Legends class toy of Bumblebee, and I basically uh, showed everyone for a moment. Uh, moving the camera around right here, I showed everyone that out of all the out of the handful of uh, Legends class toys of Bumblebee that have been released based on his uh, Generation One style version, the uh, Universe Classics Bumblebee is uh, the most size accurate compared to the other mini bots that have been released by Hasbro. And also. I apologize for not being able to show these guys off in robot mode, but to me personally, uh, vehicle mode is the one where the size accuracy, in my opinion, it plays out more. Yeah. Uh, Wolf Knight Gaming, do you want me to show that group shot of minibots again? Alrighty, so um, it's quarter after 10 here, everyone, and I got a big day tomorrow, so I think I'll end the video right now. So this has been a video review of the Transformers Universe, uh, Universe Classics 25th Anniversary Legends Class Bumblebee. And in my opinion, this toy Bumblebee, the, um, my camera froze on me for a second there, but this toy Bumblebee, compared to the other mini bots that Hasbro has sold, it's the most uh, size accurate compared to, compared to all of them. See if I can get them straightened out for you somewhat. Let's see what you guys are saying in the live stream chat. Wolf and Gaming, you should try out the Transformers Earth Wars game. I might. I might later, Wolf and 3 Gaming. Uh, input says it's past his bedtime. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching. This has been the TF Fan Geek, and this has been a video review of the Transformers Universe Classics Legends Class Bumblebee toy. And if you haven't already, and if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Even though oh Transformers fans everywhere are saying there's too many toys of Bumblebee that have been released east um, in my opinion, uh, this is one toy of Bumblebee to have in your Transformers collection. Thank you guys all so much for tuning into the live stream chat at uh at uh trying to get you eyes off uh Gary's Transformers reviews, David Hill, Input, Crimson Raptors, Raptors, and uh uh Wolf and Ga Wolf Knight Gaming. Thank you guys all so much for stopping by. I thank you guys all for your continued support. Please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the TFN Geek. 
And uh, hopefully tomorrow, it was supposed to come today, but the post office bumbled it up. Uh, Crimson Raptors told me that he sent me a uh, Transformers toy as a gift. So uh, Crimson Raptors, thank you again for that. A shout out to you to end the video. Thank you so much for sending me that Transformers toy. Hopefully it'll come tomorrow. It was supposed to come today originally, but the post office uh, screwed it up. But um, tomorrow, if it does come tomorrow night, Crimson Raptors, then I will do an unboxing video. So oh, everyone who watches my videos, including myself, can finally fi discover the identity of the Transformers toy you sent me. So thank you guys all so much and have a great day. Transform and roll out. Good night, everyone.